Satan comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. This is the words of Jesus in John 10.10. 10. And welcome to New Dawn Ministries. TV. So tonight I want to share a word with you um, and I want to share a word of encouragement especially for those who feel that the enemy has come and he has really um, stolen things, he has destroyed and killed certain things in your life. I'm talking about the power of the restoration that comes from God. Hallelujah. Now in John 10.10, 10, now Jesus makes it quite clear that the plan of Satan is to steal, is to kill, and is to destroy. What does he destroy? He wants to destroy your future, your destiny. He wants to steal your anointing. Hallelujah. Now, what I love about this verse is how Jesus concludes it. He says, but I have come as the Lord uh, to give you life and life in abundance. So tonight we are talking about the restorative power of God. If you can go with me to the book of um, Judges chapter 16 and um, we will be reading from verse 19 and it reads as follows. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and to begin to subdue him, and his strength left him. This is the story of Delilah and Samson. So Samson, as we all know, he was anointed by God to defend the Israelites and to defeat the Philistines. However, uh, uh, Samson um, makes a fatal error. Um, he goes out there um, and uh, he encounters this woman by the name of Delilah. And Delilah was a hired a servant of the Philistines to sought to seek to find the secret source behind the anointing of Samson. And, and where we just read, we see now where the final um, part of Delilah where he is, she instructed um, people to shave off the seven braids of Samson and the Bible says his strength left him and after that Samson had lost the anointing he had lost the mandate that God had given him he was incapable of defeating the Philistines the Bible says he was reduced to a natural man and he was subdued and we all know the story and his eyes was taken out and I want to talk to someone you feel that you've been in ministry before but due to certain things that you've done in your life you've you've blown it you've allowed Satan to come in and Satan has stolen and probably in some of you he has killed certain things the passion that you once had for the Lord the passion that you once had to pursue the things of God has left you in fact some of you you are feeling so guilty there's a shame and a stigma that is associated with you you don't feel that God can restore you once more you don't feel that you can come back into the ministry that God has called you in fact you are incapable of even praying for yourself because of the of, of what Satan has stolen from you and you find yourself like Samson your hair has been shaven off in other words the glory that was upon you the anointing that God used to uh, bestow upon you has departed because of some of the mistakes some of you have made and I want to encourage you and say to you that we are serving a God who can restore you hallelujah he can restore what the enemy has stolen has destroyed and has killed God is capable of restoring you to the former glory that you used to walk in in fact when you look into the Bible you realize that there were certain individuals who had fallen from grace I mean if you look at the story of David how he committed adultery with Bathsheba you know if you look at also um, Apostle Peter how he denied Jesus you know at the hour where Jesus really was uh, 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 relying on his disciples for them to pray with him and Peter 
deny Jesus three times, the Bible tells us, and, 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 and it was a shameful act. You can imagine the state of shame that Peter felt, that at the hour that the Lord needed him the most, Peter denied him not once, not twice, but three times Peter denied him. Hallelujah. But I'm here to say that God specializes in restoring broken vessels. God is a master architect. If you can come back to God and say, God, I am here. I repent. I promise you because he gave us his word in John 10, 10. God knows what the enemy comes to steal, but he puts a part. He says, but I, as the Lord, I am here to give you life and give you life in abundance. Let me tell you that life that comes in abundance. It is the life that comes to you after the enemy is stolen from you. Hallelujah. When God gives you an abundant life, he gives you an abundant life because he has seen what the enemy has taken from you. And finally, um, the prodigal son, a prominent son of this father who was so wealthy, he goes and insults his father by demanding um, an inheritance before his father can even pass on. And the Bible tells us that he went on to squander the inheritance that he received from his father. But the Bible also shows us the heart of the father. The father waited patiently for his second born. He waited for his prodigal son. And when the son came back, the Bible tells us that he, the son, was restored to the former glory. In fact, the father put the ring of authority on his fingers. He put the garment of, um, 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 of honor upon him as soon as he came back. Now, I want to conclude in the book of Judges 16, and I want you to jump to verse 22. It says here, but the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. I find this to be profound. The anointing which was symbolized by the hair on the head of Samson, the Bible says that hair that was shaven, it began to grow. My goodness. It is like God is saying to all of us that the anointing, it has a capability of growing back. You know, when I, when, I, when I saw this, I was so excited because God did not choose to put the anointing in any other thing, but he chose to put it on the hair. In fact, when you shave your head, your hair will grow back again. Some of us with the beards, when we shave our beards, it grows again. And that's the nature of the anointing. God is saying, I am capable of restoring to you what the enemy is taking away, even if it was a decision that you had made in error. If you can come back to God with a repentant heart, I believe God will restore you. And the Bible says that Samson killed more Philistines after he was restored by God compared to when he had killed the Philistines before he had fell into the temptation of Delilah. Hallelujah. In other words, the restoration was so powerful that Samson was capable of destroying even more Philistines after he was restored by God. In fact, Peter, in the book of Pentecost, we read that Peter preached so powerfully that he, you know, 3,000 men were added in one single sermon. And some pastors uh, say that it was a thousand for every denial that Peter had made to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for that one who feels that I have blown it, I have missed it, I have made a fatal error. I pray for that one who feels that the enemy is taken, the enemy is stolen, the enemy has destroyed certain things in their life. And I pray that they will experience the restorative power of Jesus upon their life. Hallelujah. And I hear the Spirit of God saying that when Peter was restored, Jesus spoke to him and Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Jesus asked Peter the same question three times. And every time when Peter said yes, Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep and feed my lambs. And I love that because the qualification, listen to me, the qualification for you to be restored by God is whether you love Jesus or not. 
If you love Jesus in your heart and you feel that you love him, that is all it takes for God to restore you to the former glory that you once had. Hallelujah. And, to, and God will add even more upon your life. The only qualification is do you love the Lord? That's all. And Peter was restored simply because he loved the Lord. Father, thank you for that soul. Thank you for that minister. Thank you for that man and that woman of God who had made those fatal errors, but they are coming back to you renewed and strengthened. In the name of Jesus, we give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.